Welcome to Accreditation in Community Colleges from the Association of Community College Trustees. This webinar is a short primer meant to give you an understanding of what you need to know about accreditation as a community college trustee. I'm Noah Brown, President and CEO of the Association of Community College Trustees. Thank you for taking the time to view this webinar. It is part of ACCT's ongoing efforts to equip trustees with the information and resources they need to lead their institutions successfully in partnership with their president or chancellor. Governing boards hold institutions in trust and define the mission and values of their institutions. Understanding what accreditation is, how it functions, and what it means for your college is necessary for a board to govern its institution effectively. Accreditors pay special attention to the governing board. Its policies, its decisions, and its behaviors are key indicators of institutional health and well-being. First, accreditation is a precondition for receiving federal and state funding. Losing institutional accreditation happens rarely, but when it does, it can be life-threatening for almost any college. Second, accreditation, which occurs at both the institutional and programmatic levels, is a time-consuming and expensive activity for your college. At any given time, faculty and staff are preparing for, undergoing, or following up on accreditation. Third, the recommendations of accreditors can have important programmatic and budgetary implications that you need to consider. Finally, accreditation is an opportunity for your college to step back from its daily activities and take stock of how well it's doing. As such, it can be an invaluable tool for trustees to understand better where their colleges are succeeding and where further progress is needed. The U.S. system is unique because of its peer-to-peer -peer oversight for upholding quality. With the support of the Lumina Foundation, this webinar is based on a new paper from ACCT written by Dr. Judith Eaton, the President of the Council for Higher Education Accreditation. The webinar features a variety of accreditation experts. We are grateful to them for assisting us in this project. I welcome your reactions and suggestions for how we can continue to help you perform your important role at your institution. During this webinar, you will learn about the purpose and roles of accreditation in U.S. higher education, the organizations that accredit community colleges, the process of accreditation, and the role of trustees in the accreditation process. Each topic will have a reference to the corresponding page in the accompanying report. The webinar will conclude with some caveats and concerns that trustees should consider, along with links to a variety of resources for additional information. Lumina um, is pushing institutions and the nation to increase attainment rates, to increase the number of, of individuals in the United States who have high quality credentials. And we've pushed very hard on the numbers and on closing gaps and ensuring that more people get those credentials. But behind that goal is a real commitment to what those credentials can mean for the credential holder. And if it doesn't mean that they are getting access to meaningful opportunity, then we will not have met our goal. Uh, even if we can tally the numbers, uh, if they're not of high quality, if they're not opening up opportunity for people, uh, then we will have failed. And so as a result, we have prioritized quality in our current strategic plan. And we have a definition of high quality that you see on the board here um, that we believe a credential is only of high quality. One, if it has transparent uh, and clear learning outcomes so that students and others understand what the credential means in terms of what students have learned to earn it. And two, that it's designed to provide students uh, access to employability skills that lead to success in the workforce, and that it sets up learners for continuous learning beyond just the learning that one attains in the program itself. According to Judith Eaton, the purpose of accreditation is to assure and improve academic quality in higher education. Accreditation has been part of higher education in the U.S. for more than 100 years as a form of self-regulation and peer review of colleges and universities. Created by higher education itself, accreditation is a non-governmental activity. The United States stands apart from most other countries in the world where accreditation is typically run by governments. Accreditation plays five major roles. 
all of which are essential as a college carries out its work. During his presentation at the ACCT Community College National Legislative Summit, Dr. Richard Wynn describes these roles. Purposes of accreditation are first of all to provide quality assurance to the public, to multiple stakeholders of the public, to students and other institutions that an institution is both stable, which speaks to its financial, often its financial and planning functions, and effectively achieving its stated mission which has to do with student achievement and student learning. It gives credibility to the degrees and credentials awarded to the students, and this is absolutely critical for not only transfer to other academic institutions, but recognition by employers. Its primary, and a creditor has two concurrent simultaneous goals. One is this external message that turns to the public and says, this is a valid institution. It's doing what it says it is, and it's stable. But then it turns back toward the institution and says, what are you doing to drive and, and pursue continuous improvement? And the language of accreditation always includes this dual role that speaks to you have or have not complied with standards, but here are the things you can do to make sure you continuously improve and are constantly seeking to become more effective. There are two types of accreditation, institutional and programmatic. Institutional creditors review an entire college. Colleges must have institutional accreditation to receive most federal and state funding. It is the primary type of accreditation that the public relies on to affirm the basic academic legitimacy of a college. There are three types of institutional accreditors. Regional accreditors review primarily degree-granting public and nonprofit institutions. National career-related accreditors review primarily for profit and non-degree institutions. National faith-based accreditors review seminaries and other religious or doctrine-based degree-granting institutions. Programmatic accreditors review academic programs with institutions in particular fields such as business, engineering, technology, and nursing. Because institutional accreditation is more than 100 years old and relies on peer review conducted primarily by volunteers, it organized itself on a regional basis to facilitate travel to institutions that were under review. Today, there are six regional accreditors, five of which accredit community colleges. This map shows the states and territories that fall within the purview of each regional accreditor. Each regional accreditor has its own standards for accreditation, policies governing the process, and its outcomes. While there is much overlap among the regional accreditors, trustees should become familiar with the standards, practices, and policies of their college's regional accreditor. For example, the Southern Association of Schools and Colleges recently added a financial literacy component, as explained by its president, Dr. Bell Whelan. There were two new standards that we felt, uh, that the committee felt needed to come forward. One was, historically, forever, we have required evaluation of everybody in the institution, faculty, uh, uh, administrators, support staff, everybody, but we never asked the board to evaluate itself. And so we said, well, you know, sounds like a good thing to do. So there is now a requirement coming forward uh, that we're asking to have boards self-evaluate. We're not determining how they should do it any more than we determine how they should evaluate anybody else in the institution. We just want to see documentation that they are taking time to see what is our role, are we carrying out our role, how effective are we with our role. The other one that you didn't ask about but is there is in response to the federal government's concern about uh, non-payment of loans, loan default rates. Uh, for some reason, they want to hold institutions responsible for students not paying their loans, which I'm still struggling to understand. If the federal government loans the money and the institutions have nothing to say about it, and if employers hire people and determine entry-level salaries and the institutions have nothing to say about it, how the hell are institutions responsible for paying back the money? I, I'm, I'm really struggling with that. But there is that movement. So what we're doing in response to that is asking institutions to put in a, federal, a um, financial literacy component somewhere in the curriculum, whether it's a part of orientation, whether it's, you know, in intro to English. I don't really care where you place it, as long as there is some way to document that you have helped students understand what it means to borrow money and to have to pay it back. Each accreditor may approach the accreditation process somewhat differently, but I'll include the four major stages shown in this diagram. Dr. Richard Wynn describes the process. 
It speaks to a set term of reaffirmation. This can be anywhere from six to 10 years. It includes annual and midterm reports to watch for critical trends. The department is not happy to have an accreditor stop by every 10 years. There's too many things that can happen too fast. So accreditors are increasingly paying attention to critical indicators uh, throughout, the, uh, throughout the life between comprehensive reviews. It may ask for special reports, special visits. There's a range of things that send chills down the spine of, of, of institutional leadership. An accreditor, if it sees serious problems, can issue, first of all, a warning. It can move to probation. If things are really bad, they can do show cause, which means your, your accreditation is going away at a set date unless you can show cause why it shouldn't happen. And that sometimes is the necessary whump up the side of the head to get the attention of the Board of Trustees that serious things are happening and need to be dealt with. After that, of course, there can be the loss of accreditation, which is a highly consequential activity uh, for everybody concerned. Okay, the process, of course, involves a rigorous and honest and candid self-evaluation. The college then writes a self-study. Uh, some of those are burdensome. We're trying to work on that in our region and make them simpler. Uh, they submit that along with supporting evidences. The agency then convenes a visiting team of peer evaluators, peer reviewers, who are trained by the agency and go to the campus. The key words here are clarify and verify. Each accreditor has developed standards by which to judge a college or program. These standards address all major areas of college operations, including academics, student services, governance, finance, and facilities. The standards on governance include expectations for boards and trustees. Trustees should be familiar with the complete list of standards and well-versed in the general standards on governance and the standards on the board of trustees. The accreditor's membership its accredited institutions or programs, decides the standards and policies as well as the practices that are part of reviewing a college. Core requirements are the 12 things that our members have determined that you must have and in, in which you must be compliant at all times. That includes things like having a governing board, uh, having an administration, having a strategic plan, having a mission, having enough faculty to keep the doors open, having enough money, uh, you know, those basic things. The others are, and so if any committee, uh, or any institution rather, that gets a recommendation um, that this needs to be improved in a core requirement automatically goes on warning or probation, depending on how serious it is. Uh, with the others, you, you might not necessarily get to that sanction, uh, and so if you have to measure some being more important than others, then I would have to say for us the core requirements are more important uh, than the comprehensive standards. But our requirement is that an institution be in compliance with all of our standards all of the time. Your planning, your mission, your vision, think of accreditation the whole time you were doing that. Have those guidelines somewhere you can look at them and say, we're about to do this. Does that help or hurt our accreditation? And by the way, what can we learn from all these criteria over here that all of us have put together with you? All accreditors have a decision-making body, a commission, council, or board that decides whether to award accredited status to a specific college. The general levels are reaffirmation of accreditation, warning or probation, show cause, and denial of accreditation. Trustees have a role in reviewing the overall organization of the self-study activity, assuring full participation from all parties, and that the full range of accreditation standards will be addressed. Trustees themselves often sit on a self-study committees, and when the self-study is complete, trustees need to review and agree to forward this important document to the accrediting organization. At the second stage, peer review. Trustees play a vital role as part of hosting and engaging the peer review team. This may take the form of an initial introductory meeting with the team, individual trustee interviews with team members, and participating in the final campus meeting with the team during which the college learns of major findings and in some cases, the team's recommendations. At the third stage, it is common for the chair of the board to accompany the college president or chancellor to meet with the accrediting commission or council. 
This is an important opportunity for the chair to present the college to the commission and to engage the commissioners in a valuable discussion about the college's future. The fourth and final stage of the accreditation process is post-review monitoring. Trustees working with a president or chancellor have a role here as well, assuring that the recommendations are addressed by the college and that needed information is submitted on a timely basis. Dr. Judith Eaton identifies three caveats or concerns for accreditation for trustees to consider. First, pay additional attention to programmatic accreditation. For many community colleges, the time and effort put into programmatic accreditation is significant. These programmatic efforts can be almost invisible to trustees. While larger numbers of programs are accredited at larger colleges, even a modest number of such reviews has an impact on smaller colleges. It is essential that trustees are informed of the full number of accreditation reviews and the expected visits in any given year. In addition, trustees should be kept current on the actions that the college is taking with regard to recommendations emerging from all accreditation reviews. Second, be thoughtful about accreditor recommendations that involve major outlays of institutional funds. All accreditors, whether examining the entire college or a single program, understandably aspire for the best, as do trustees. Recommendations emerging from an accreditation review can be very attractive, but sometimes very costly. And college finances rarely lend themselves to doing all that might be desirable, even if recommended by an accreditor. Finally, trustees should be vigilant about the independence of the board. It is important to make sure that expectations of the accreditors do not, however unintentionally, undermine the appropriate authority of the board, especially regarding selection of presidents and chancellors, approval of academic programs, and relationships with faculty and staff, as well as trustee engagement with state and local lawmakers. To learn more about the trustee's role in the accreditation process, download a copy of Accreditation and Community College Trustees from the publication section of the ACCT website. You will also find it helpful to peruse your regional accreditor's website. Each organization posts its standards and policies online.